So, okay, so this was round two? Round two of the closed? And, um... I really wasn't sure what my opponent was going to play. It, it's it's nice because this tournament you get your pairings ahead of time with your, your colors and everything so you can prepare for people. So I thought it was like a decent chance it would be a Catalan, decent chance he would play like a Slav or something. I wasn't I was I just had no information on what he plays. Um So okay, this is all theory. And he played this the C6 move. So, okay. The queen goes on c2 in the Catalan most of the time, right? But after c6, if I play queen c2, um, I think it, it allows the option of playing knight a6. I think. I think is the reason <laughs> that you play knight t2 first. You want to wait to till they've commit committed the knight to d7 before you play queen c2, was what I remembered. How do you play b6? I, I mean, I, I guess it's a way to play, but I don't think I've ever... I don't, I don't think I've ever, ever lost or drawn a game with where they played c6 and b6 because there's just so much pressure you're allowing. Um, so I played queen c2 here, which, I mean, I don't know what else I played, but he played knight a6, and then I, for a second I got a little upset with myself because I was like... May maybe this was wrong? Because... I don't, I don't know. I mean, I have to play a3 now. But, I mean, his, his knight is not good on a6. Like, uh, And, I, again, I was metagaming too much uh, because my opponent is known for spending, like, a ton of time and always being in time pressure, as am I. But this time he was playing instantly, and I was like, what the fuck? No one's ever done this. He's never done this before. So I assumed that I was in theory. he was in theory. Um, a3 is pretty forced, otherwise... I don't know. But, okay, he plays bishop b7. This is sort of like a game I played against Daniel uh, a few games ago, and I won. Except for the knight is on a6, and um, it's the same position, except black is up a tempo, and with that tempo they played knight a6. So I'm not even sure that that's an improvement. I think it actually makes it worse. So this is not such a big deal. Um, so yeah, I play e4, I break in the center, um, I, I was having trouble understanding the position with the knight on e6, I wasn't sure what it was doing there, but I was, I was trying not to talk myself out of good moves. So he can take either way, um, if he wants to, although I think taking just leaves me, leaves me with a comfortable advantage. So... Rook c8 he tries, he's just putting a rook on the same file as my queen, as you do in chess. Um, and then apparently I should play b4 here, which I played the next move. b4 seems like one of those moves that's either going to be uh, good, very good or very bad. And me not understanding pawn structures ever, you know. I wasn't so sure. I played the second best move. It's like marginally worse than b4. I played e5. I thought e5 makes sense here because I mean he he didn't he didn't take on e4, so I, I might as well uh, gain some space here and harass his knight. P push his pieces into the gimp suit, as they say. And um, now I play b4, which is the best move in this position. Uh, I think the commentators were not so sure about it, but I don't know how else to stop c5, and I think that's his only plan. If I just play something like, I don't know, rook d1, c5, I don't really- black is breaking out, I mean, I feel like he doesn't have any problems anymore. Um, I think Josh said it looked weird. I thought it looked weird too, but I, I also thought that stopping c5 was worth, worth playing a slightly strange looking move. Um, I spent kind of a long time on b4, because I have to make sure that he can't play c5 anyway. So what I came up with after c5 was pretty good. Uh, just d takes c5, followed by b5, and um, it's very, very cramped for black, and I would like to play a4, a5, a6, pretty much. 
that that's about that's about all I I care about. Um, which was the best play to, way to play, but I could tell that my opponent was frustrated at this point, and um, it came out later that the reason he was playing fast against me was because he lost to Rhett in the first round, like for no reason, because he just had no time, and Rhett plays instantly, so he's trying not to do that. But I can't, I can't find a move for Black here, other than what he played. Uh, apparent, I think th the computer move here is pretty fucking insane. Um, and it, it makes it makes sense if you think about, uh, you know, the G Geary's rule of bishops. But yeah, if you, if you do nothing, I, I might just do this. I might, I might not. I might play b6, then a6 is a is a little idea sometimes. I don't have to do that at all. I can just improve my pieces. I can I can even play h4 like at some point if I want to. You know, just gain space on the flanks. Like he he can't do anything. Um a5 I think is a pretty terrible move because I, I'm not going to take and you're just making you're just making weaknesses. You've given me a pass pawn. And uh, I think the A-pawn is hard to defend long-term. Like, I can even do this, maybe. Or just knight b3 right away, I think, just wins the pawn. What, are you going to put your knight on a8? <laughs> uh, a6, I think, is probably equally terrible, because they play b6, a5. And um, I would argue that it might be worse than a5, because at least after a5, I can't play b6, a5. Because then you get the a6 square. This way, you take away the a6 square from yourself. You have to play like knight a8 or knight e8. Knight e8 is more reasonable. But then I just go here and you have no space and it sucks. So this is a position where, you know, people could easily make a mistake because there's only one reasonable move and it's sort of ridiculous. And um, there's just a lot of pressure. And a human will want to break out of this, like, right away. So, the best move is actually bishop a8, which I just love. The, the reason that I'm coming up with to defend bishop a8 is that a6 won't come with tempo for one. Two, the bishop's defended on a8, so there's not... There might not be a knight g5 uh, Catalan tactic in the future. Um... I'm sure there are other reasons, but this is the only way to not just be worse. It does look terrible. I agree, and I don't think that a human would ever play it, because it's a move you would have to prep, and I don't think a human would prep this position, because why would you want to have this position? So. My opponent was human and played f6, which is kind of what I expected, actually. It, it just He just wants to break out. Um, if I, I mean, I think taking is what he wants me to do. I'm gonna play rook b1. Like, even this is pretty bad for black because of the backwards e-pawn. And still his bishop is very, very bad here undefended. And it's gonna run into tactics sometimes. So I could even do this. But because it's, I thought it was what he wanted me to do, I played bishop b2. Um, bishop b2 sets up a trap. Um, very thematic in the Catalan. So I, I kind of expected a move like f5, like just accepting that he's worse, you know, but at least, at least closing off this bishop. Um, yeah, taking is, is pretty god awful, because I can take with the knight now. P pretty hideous. Um, so his move makes some sense. But it just doesn't work. Um, he played d4, which I had anticipated. He's trying to close off my bishop, and before I leave uh, this diagonal with my knight, preparing for it. But what did black miss here? I mean, he said he didn't miss it. it he said that he did this on purpose, but I think there were some evaluation, evaluating problems on my opponent's part if that was the case yeah knight g5 
give that an X clam. So yeah, I had to I had to think about this a while before I actually before I played Bishop B2, I had already kind of uh, thought down the whole line. Okay, so knight g5, I'm attacking the bishop, I'm threatening mate. F takes g5 is pretty forced. I mean, there's just nothing else. So he takes bishop b7. And if you thought my, my Catalan bishop was good now, now that it's unopposed, it's a fucking monster. He has this weakness on e6, he has this backwards pawn. I have I have this this shit going on for me. I have the e4 square for my knight now, followed by the d6 square. Um, it just looks pretty good. I can I can blockade the square pretty easily. It's not going to lead to any problems. But then he shocked me a little bit with knight takes e5, and this was his point, I suppose. So I had thought down this line before playing bishop b2. This is how far I got before playing bishop b2. I saw bishop takes c8, queen takes c8, queen e4. And I didn't really see a, a great follow-up here, so I, I went for it. Um, I still had to spend time on each move because I was blunder checking, because I blunder a lot. And then uh, when I got to this position, I realized that if I play queen e4, maybe bishop f6 followed by knight e8 to d6, putting pressure on the c-pawn and kicking my queen off of this nice centralized square, followed by queen e8 to h5, playing knight g4, knight f3, and like trying to checkmate me. So this kind of scared me for a while. I spent like 10 minutes. Or more. I don't know. It's in the VOD. You can go watch. But So, I, I, guess, I guess the question is, what's the best response to bishop f6? They're not ghosts. I'll tell you that much. If I don't play accurately, I could easily lose. This was round two. There's more than one way to do it. I mean, I, besides Queen E4, I don't really have any any moves that look enticing to me. Well, that's because I knew what I was doing in the opening in this game, and then the game where I was trying to analyze, I, I played the Kalashnikov for the first time in my life with knowing zero theory. Yeah, this was 90 plus 30 also. So Queen E4 seems like the only reasonable move to me. There's probably other moves, I guess. But I, I just like getting control over all these light squares right away. Um, so bishop f6 is the best move. Uh, my opponent played bishop d6, which I was very happy to see, because the knight belongs on d6 if he wants to try and get any counterplay at all. But here is something that I actually I had to be super careful about, because I only have one like good move, and uh, it, it was what I decided to play here. I can't move my knight, my bishop's not doing anything right now. If I just like fuck off and play a5, I mean knight e8, knight d6 is coming. It, it looks pretty bad, like you could play g4, you could play knight f3, like... It, it's looking pretty scary. Uh, rook e1, g4, or knight e8, both, both are probably fine. And this is just coming. And, and currently my pieces aren't really helping with the situation, and... It's going to be a big fucking problem that my knight is overworked defending the c-pawn and the f3 square. Like, that's a big problem. So, yeah, I have to play f4. It's the only- it's the only way to- you have to kick this fucker out right away. You can't- you can't let him get comfortable. Uh, he can take, but, you know, take- knight g4 doesn't do anything. So, um, he can get his bishop in here, but- I'm pretty sure that I can just play bishop a3 and ignore his uh, nonsense. He's not getting an attack, like, worst- I mean, worst case, I could maybe even play rook a3 and g3. Worst case. So that's why I decided to play queen e4, is because I was like, okay, I, gu I guess I have f4. I wasn't really sure about it, but bishop d6 is not threatening, challenging at all. Um, in fact, I actually have a winning move here that I missed. Yes, you can't you can't let those fuckers get comfortable. Yeah, I, I missed bishop takes d4. Cause I saw this and I was like, okay, 98, then what? But you just play c5. Like I'm not taking that. 
my 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 automatic brain was like, oh, I could take this for two pods, but but this is this is pretty strong. Play rook c1, either rook to c1. G pawn's hanging. The e pawn is fucked. His pawn structure sucks. He's down in exchange. He's gonna he's gonna get got. So I could have played that and just won easily. I played a5, which is fine. It's just not as winning as this. And my idea behind a5 was kind of deep. The idea was that after knight e8, I have a6, followed by queen b7. Um, the really scary thing, though, was queen e8, I need to be very sure... Sorry for spoilers. I need to be very sure that queen e8 is not working. Queen e8 to h5 followed by knight g4. Or even sometimes knight e4, knight f3. You know, if my queen leaves this diagonal. So I understood that if my queen leaves, leaves the light square diagonal, like, I might get attacked. So it never crossed my mind that I was going to be taking on a7. Uh, what I had prepared for queen d8 was b6. So if I take on a7... Knight e4 is very strong. Because, you know, knight takes e4, knight f3, followed by queen h5. I'm still winning, but it's- I don't- why would I allow this if I don't have to? Um, b6 is just- is just- just- just really strong. Now, rook f7 doesn't work because I just take on a7. And you can take my queen, but as we know, two pawns on the 7th are unstoppable. And I will be making a new queen soon. Um, other than that, I'm still kind of threatening to take on a7 and just win. He has to keep both of his heavy pieces on the back rank, because otherwise he just has no light square control. He can't defend the promotion. So I thought he would play, like, maybe knight c6 here or something. Um, I thought if given the choice, he would prefer me to take on a7 rather than taking on b6, because then it... You know, with the doubled pawns, my rook's not supporting it directly. Like, I have another pawn in the way. So I thought, if given the choice, I thought he would prefer to have the doubled pawns. It's He's still completely lost. But he took on he took on b6, which I was kind of surprised to see. Because now I go a7. And uh, because there's no pawn on a6... I'm already threatening a8 equals queen. So he has to play queen a8. And uh, that is where the queen will stay for the rest of the game. Uh, queen takes b6 is like the only good move from the position, but it's sort of obvious. Now he has problems with his d6 bishop, the e6 pawn, and the attack is never going to happen. So I was pretty comfortable at this point. Um, knight c6 is, is is bad, but he doesn't have much better. I think his best try is knight f7 to defend the bishop. But, I mean, I have like 17 different ways to win at this point. Maybe here. Something like this. You know. And eventually I'm going to promote my a pawn. So he blunders and plays knight c6. I guess it's not a blunder, but uh, it just kind of fails to rook a6. And there are some cool queen sack tactics coming up here. I want to put my rook on a1 so that I can, after rook c8, I can play queen takes c6. Rook takes c6, rook takes c6, queen takes c6, followed by a8, a8 equals queen. Um... And if he played knight d7, I would have played queen takes c6. This is over. Uh, he can play this, but I take on d6 or knight e4 is pretty brutal. But he thought for a long time and played knight e8. And I can still take on c6 if I want to, but I feel like this is the closest to consolidating for a move that I would like him to get to. Like, yeah, I take care of it. I didn't like him being able to defend this square with anything other than his queen, so I thought knight e4 was maybe more accurate. And yeah, I mean, he still can't play knight f7 because it's queen takes c6. I'm threatening knight takes d6 followed by knight takes queen 6 queen c6, rook c6. 
Rook c6, queen c6, a8 equals queen. So he plays knight b4 as a last hurrah, but I can just take on d6 and then and then take take again. And he he resigned here, understandably so. But yeah, I didn't want to allow him to play knight a8 like a god. So I don't know. I thought I played okay for that game. He went a little crazy there with that weird exchange sacrifice, if that was on purpose. But yeah, I think what was my one like mistake? Is it, uh, it was missing bishop d4 like an instant win. But I'm still winning after e5. But anyway.